Hey guys, one of the best parts about the Raspberry Pi is that you can install almost any flavor of Ubuntu. And recently, I did a video on installing and setting up Ubuntu Core for the Raspberry Pi. The good part, it's meant to be light and headless. The bad part, it forced us to use an Ubuntu SSO account. So what's a better option if you want to keep the good part and take out the bad? The answer is to install Ubuntu Server on our Raspberry Pi. And that's what I'll be showing you in this video. First of all, let's start by making sure that we have the Raspberry Pi Imager tool. This is what's going to help us flash Ubuntu Server on our Raspberry Pi's SD card. And you can easily grab this tool from the Raspberry Pi's official website. So once you have it installed, let's plug in a micro SD card into our computer. And on my end, I'm going to be using a Mac, but you can follow along using a Windows PC or Linux machine as well. Once it's installed, let's start the Raspberry Pi imager. And the first part of the process is to select our Raspberry Pi's model. Next, we're going to tell the imager that we want Ubuntu server as the OS image. You're not going to see it in the default list. So be sure to click other general purpose OS. Once you do that, Ubuntu should be fairly easy to find near the top. And we're going to go with any Ubuntu server image that you see. The great thing about these OS images is that even super old models of the Raspberry Pi are supported. Finally, the only option that's left here is storage. And you just need to find and select the SD card that you inserted into the computer. And now we're going to click next. But before we continue, it's always a good idea to look at the OS customization settings. So click edit settings. And as you can see, we can set things like host name, username and password. So let's start by adding a host name to identify our Raspberry Pi and then just add a user for us to log in with when we boot up Ubuntu server. And by the way, if you have Wi-Fi on your Raspberry Pi, you can easily add that information here. And the point of us doing all of this now is we can completely skip the initial setup process later during boot. Before we wrap up, definitely jump over to the services tab and make sure that SSH is enabled. This is going to let us remote into our Raspberry Pi at any time once it's up and running. Now we can continue by clicking save and then applying these settings by clicking yes. Last but not least, confirm with another yes for writing this OS image to our SD card. And then we'll give it a few minutes to let the imager finish writing the image and then finish it up by verifying it. Once the flashing is done, you can close out of the imager tool and then take out the SD card, popping it back into our Raspberry Pi and then turning it on. But as with any new image, you'll notice that the first time booting might take a few minutes. Once you're asked for your username and password credentials, let's enter that information and you should be fully logged into your Ubuntu server OS. You may have noticed something really annoying since the Pi booted up. There's this tool called cloud init that keeps interrupting you when you're typing commands. This is Ubuntu's way of automatically keeping your images in sync on the cloud. But for most people who don't need it, including myself, you can easily turn this off. To disable cloud in it, just run the following sudo touch command. This basically creates an empty file that tells Ubuntu, we don't need this kicking off anymore. And to make sure you're seeing this reflected across reboots, you can restart your Pi by running sudo reboot. And you'll immediately notice the difference because cloud in it will stay out of your way. The next thing I recommend that you do is assign your Raspberry Pi a static IP address. Since we enabled SSH server during flashing, we know that it's running, but Ubuntu uses DHCP by default, which means your Raspberry Pi could potentially have any IP address every time it reboots. So let's fix that by first running the IP link command. If you have an ethernet connection, you'll see something similar to ETH zero. But if you're using a Wi-Fi connection, you may see something starting with WL. So whatever it may be, let's copy the name of that network interface because we'll need it soon. 
let's use the cd command and jump to slash etc slash net plan. Right after that, run ls and you'll see that there might be a YAML file there called 50-cloud-init. So if you see this, we're first going to have to delete this file using sudo rm. After that, we need to create a new file called 01-netcfg.yaml. And you can run the same nano command that I'm running and we'll now be adding our static IP information. We'll start the first line with network colon and then jump to the next line. Keep in mind that each time that you see an indented space in this file, it's not a tab. It's actually two spaces. So in other words, it's network colon new line, two spaces before the version part. And you can copy exactly what I'm doing until you get to the part below ethernets. There's actually two indents before the next part, which is four spaces total. So if you're using an ethernet connection, you can keep ethernets as is. But if yours is a Wi-Fi connection, you should use Wi-Fi's instead. And right below that line is the network interface that we copied a few moments ago. So that's what you want to use where I've specified ETH zero at. And the rest should be straightforward since you're choosing an IP address from your local subnet. And that's followed by the gateway address. And last but not least, you can use those addresses that I have under name servers. These are basically public DNS servers that are provided by Google. And before we save this static IP config, I'm gonna to try to make this a little easier for you to read. There you go. So I've added the number of spaces that I have before each line starts. Just make sure that you're using that same format because otherwise you're gonna to have to fix this later. Okay, so let's save this file using control X followed by Y and then hitting enter. Let's run the following net plan command to make sure that these changes that we just made are reflected immediately. After that, we're gonna check our IP address by running IP ADDR. And if you look near the INET section, you'll see that our Raspberry Pi is now using the static IP address. At this point, I highly recommend just rebooting your Pi using sudo reboot. And now we can try to SSH into our Raspberry Pi using Ubuntu server. So I'll be using my Windows machine to run PuTTY and then provide the static IP that we set earlier as the host name. And the SSH connection should immediately start asking for credentials. So once you specify your Pi user, we should be connected for running commands remotely. And so there you go. Ubuntu server is a solid option, not just for Raspberry Pis, but essentially any device that you might have in a data center, public or private cloud. And in the next video, we'll be taking a look at how to install any flavor of Ubuntu desktop on top of our Ubuntu server image. Thanks for watching. And for more on Ubuntu or the Raspberry Pi, please consider subscribing to this channel.